Hey everyone, it looks like you all wanted to go back to reviewing Gen 1 Pokemon. Well, sort of. We've all seen them in caves in the first generation, and for many generations afterwards. That's right, this week's Pokemon is everyone's favorite annoying bats, Golbat and Crobat, evolved form of Zubat, who is single-handedly responsible for making caves in Pokemon games take way longer than they should. Honestly, I wasn't a fan of Golbat at all considering what it evolved from, but once it got an evolution, I was pretty alright with Zubat because Crobat looks sick. I remember evolving my first Crobat as a kid, not even understanding what evolving through friendship means. And I was pretty excited with it because Crobat looks so much cooler than Golbat. But those teeth are scary though. But even with scary teeth like that, how good was our speed EV fodder Pokemon actually? Let's... yeah let's find out. In this video we'll be covering these following competitive formats. Holy sh**. This is exactly what I mean when I say I did not care for Golbat before it evolved. Look at that Gen 1 sprite. Okay, maybe now I get why no one wanted to use this thing. God, why aren't there any Lavender Town style creepypastas about this sprite? Just for that, even though I normally use the red and blue sprites for videos, for Golbat, I'll make the exception and use the Pokemon Yellow sprite. Oh, that's so much better. Alright, for real. Golbat's stats were the definition of all-around mediocre, and it's got a pretty terrible typing for the meta at the time. Weaknesses to Psychic, Ice, and Electric are all not great, especially considering that Psychic types and Blizzard Beam covers was everywhere. But hey, at least it was immune to Earthquake. Golbat's game plan used by most players was to switch in on an Earthquake and then set up. For Golbat, that meant screeching to lower defense and then hopefully hit him with a Hyper Beam or Double Edge, which could do quite a lot if it managed to scream at its opponents beforehand. It also packed Confuse Ray to be truly annoying if someone else on your team got off some paralysis, and Giga Drain for rock and ground type coverage. But even with that, it only did 40% to Golem and Rhydon. It also had trouble with a whole bunch of other stuff that either resisted its normal type moves or could kill it. Gengar, Exeggutor, Alakazam, and even Hypno destroyed it. And let's be frank, it didn't match up great against top tier threats like Tauros or Snorlax either. Even in underused, Mr. Mime and Onyx can screw Golbat up pretty badly. It ended up in underused, and let's be clear, there were only two tier lists in Gen 1 under Smogin meta, so underused wasn't a good place. And Nintendo Cup doesn't even have an analysis of it. Oh, I feel sort of bad for it. But it's okay though, because Golbat just wished hard enough and got an evolution. Literally from the power of friendship. Like, actually. Once it evolved, Golbat got a wealth of riches, 10 points in HP, attack, and defense, and 5 points in its special stats. But the real windfall came in its speed, where it got a whole 40 points to boost it up to base 130, tied for second fastest in the game after Electro. Unfortunately, its move pull really doesn't fit great with its stats or typing. For its strongest flying type moves, it had either Hidden Power Flying or Fly itself. But you usually want to use your Hidden Power for move coverage, and obviously using Fly itself isn't great. So Crobat actually ended up using Wing Attack as its flying type move, and hidden power ground or fighting for things that resisted its flying type stab. Then for its last two move slots, Crobat usually ran Toxic and Screech. If you're thinking that maybe those moves are lacking synergy, you're right. Crobat's move pull was really quite severely lacking. It could try to Toxic stall with combinations of Mean Look and Confuse Ray, but there are Pokemon who are bulkier that can do that. Crobat doesn't have any real good matchups to its name, and with it auto losing to Steel types, Poison types, and most Rock and Ground types, it's an underuse once again. And as for Nintendo Cup, even though uh, once again there is no analysis, it's in the D tier. I didn't even know tiers went that low, except for maybe in Smash. Gen 3 gave Crobat a few patches for its holes. Its crazy speed meant it was a perfect choice band user, and it now had a few moves to actually threaten with. Sludge Bomb and Aerial Lace to be specific. Hidden Power was still used in either its ground or fighting variants to cover rock types, and Shadow Ball was used to cover Gengar and Alakazam. Crobat would probably prefer to run Adamant to boost its power a little higher, but it always went jolly instead to threaten Gengar and Alakazam with Shadow Ball. After the main set, there was one other really weird set used by players, and it only had two moves. Sleep Talk and Whirlwind. It only works with three layers of spikes up and when Crobat was asleep. But the basic premise was to abuse a weird mechanic where when Sleep Talk chooses Whirlwind, Whirlwind's negative priority doesn't activate. It's a weirdly specific set. It even gets stopped by waking up too early since you don't really have any reliable way to go back to sleep other than your opponent putting you to sleep. So it only even works for five turns max, but you've gotta admit, it's pretty fun. Basically, the set allowed Crobat to utilize his speed and use Sleep Talk Whirlwinds to keep forcing your opponent to switch out and taking spikes damage until it woke up. 
Anyways, back to Crobat's main set. It understandably really hated Steel types considering its move pull. Because of that, it partners really well with Magneton, whose Magnet Pull allows it to trap Steels who otherwise might want to come in on Crobat. And Crobat's super favorable matchups against ground and fighting types let it do well against Magneton's counters too. What a sweet pairing. That said, Crobat still had its fair share of problems. Big walls like Swampert, Weezing, Donphan, and Fortress just don't take any damage from it and can do whatever they want while Crobat desperately tries to whittle away at them. It also had a really awful matchup against Milotic, who could potentially take advantage of Sludge Bomb's high poison chance to activate Marvel Scale and get even bulkier. Even with all of its checks though, Crobat ended up banned from Underuse and went straight to Borderline. The combination of its speed and power was just too much for Underuse. And of course, those new moves helped a lot too. Gen 4 continued Crobat's new inheritance by giving it some even better moves. Brave Bird and Roos, the godsends of flying types, boosted its physical attacking prowess even higher, and Cross Poison and U-Turn didn't hurt either. That said, Crobat's best sets actually weren't physical anymore. Nasty Plot let it use Sludge Bomb's new special designation along with Crobat's old friend, Hidden Power Fighting. And with either Heat Wave or Roost in the last slot, old Crobat's finally looking like it has some variance. Steel types hated Heat Wave, especially after a Nasty Plot. And Heat Ran, who could absorb fire, hated a plus two Hidden Power Fighting. But actually though, Crobat's best set was even more unconventional. Super Fang cut down even the bulkiest Pokemon to size because it guaranteed half damage damage, and Taunt and Roost let Crobat lived out its annoying past in full as an evolved Pokemon, since Taunt was used mainly to prevent walls from doing their shenanigans, like say, healing. Being this annoying the wall shows that there's still some Zubat in there after all. And for its last slot, it could go with Brave Bird to have at least some finishing power, or just go with U-Turn so it could be more hit and run. Crobat loved having entry hazards in play, as its constant whittling down would hasten the death of opposing walls. And of the entry hazards, Toxic Spice especially helped it out a lot. Finally, Crobat has some good matchups to its name. As a lead, it could KO other leads like Infernape, Azov, or Machamp as the Choice Band set, due to being able to outspeed them and hit them really hard. Inner Focus meant it was especially good against Infernape, whose fake out just resulted in it getting quickly disposed of. But as for Crobat's downsides, there were still quite a few. It got pretty outclassed in all of its rows as either a physical sweeper or a nasty plotter. And even though it loved having rocks on its side, its flying type meant it was very vulnerable to them as well. Zapdos, the Rotoms, and the familiar rock, steel, and ground types did fairly well against certain variants, but they could also all lose to nasty plot. It was actually most vulnerable to getting revenge killed, as most of its sets didn't run max speed in order to have a little extra survivability. Blissey and Snorlax walled the special set completely, but didn't like getting Brave Bird. So, what was Crobat's greatest strength? In a complete reversal, it was its versatility. It was unpredictable enough to get banned for underuse once again, but it was still outclassed by other Pokemon and overuse, who could do the majority of its roles better. So, it didn't really fit in overuse. So, it's borderline again. Alright, Gen 5. With all the different fighting types in Gen 5, Crobat's four times resistant to the type helped it out quite a bit. Its main set was still the Stallbreaker set with the only change being the use of Black Sludge in case Crobat got tricked, giving a nasty surprise to whatever stole its item. However, its other more offensive sets dwindled out a bit as better Pokemon just came to the fore, and all of Crobat's old checks were there, and doing even better. Since it was a bit more predictable this time around, Gengar, for example, nullified the predicted Super Fang perfectly. It just slid down a little bit into Underuse, where, at least in Underuse, it was a lot better suited to do other roles besides stall breaking. Over in the VGC side of things, Crobat saw a little bit of play due to the prominent of fighting types, especially Hitmontop, whose fake out couldn't do anything to the focused bat. Crobat's attacking stats still weren't that great, but thanks to its speed, it made the perfect candidate as a Tailwind support. With Tailwind, Super Fang, and Flying Gem boosted acrobatics, Crobat could be quite the nuisance. It still had its fair share of problems, though. As we said in the previous video, there's always a ton of electric types in VGC, and of course, Rock Slide which is, you know, really good in VGC. And it also hated Trick Room teams because, you know, it's really fast. But considering how many fighting types were present, Crobat could actually support its teammates pretty well thanks to Tailwind and provide some really quick sweeps. So yeah, overall for doubles, it actually wasn't that bad of a choice. All right, Gen 6. As Crobat falls more and more behind in regards to attacking, it became more of a speedy support Pokemon. In Gen 6, that meant Defog, with a healthy mix of things Crobat picked up over the past few generations, like Brave Bird, U-Turn, and Roost. In keeping with its support role, Crobat made more use of its other ability, Infiltrator, in Gen 6 to get past substitutes. But really, it struggled to stay relevant in Overuse, where it was second choice to bulkier Defoggers like Skarmory and Zapdos, and certainly couldn't hold a candle to Talonflame as a fly 
flying type sweeper. As for flying type taunters, Thunderous was just straight up better with Prankster and actually had respectable attacking stats. Crobat also struggled with psychic types like Mega Metagross and the Laddies, along with all of your favorite Crobat counters like Rotom and Heatran. Even though it could nominally hit fairy types hard, it just wasn't strong enough to justify using it as an attacker. And like we said earlier, its support roles as a defogger was also outclassed by other Pokemon in overuse. So it stayed in underuse, where, again, it was actually pretty good. However, on the double side of things, Crobat actually started doing even better. Super Fang's ability to chunk a Pokemon no matter what, bar ghost types, meant Crobat didn't really care when Uber started running around in 2016. With access to moves like Quick Guard, Haze, Taunt, and Tailwind, Crobat was sort of like a support jack of all trades. Quick Guard in particular stopped priority moves and pranksters from affecting your team, which was quite nice considering how prominent priority moves and pranksters were from 2014 all the way to 2016. It was also fast enough to taunt Xerneas before it could get a Geomancy off, and resisted all of its fairy type moves as well, which meant Crobat had a great matchup against one of the best VGC mons, period. And of course, being really fast and having access to taunt meant that it could stop a certain dog Picasso thing from cheesing people. However, throughout all of Gen 6 VGC years, Crobat was compared to Talonflame as a speedy flying type with Taunt and Quick Guard. Talonflame of course boasted the infamous Gale Wings, which gave priority to all of its flying type moves, which includes Tailwind, but its 4 times weakness to Rock Slide meant it sometimes got grounded faster. Or Crobat's bad defenses meant it wouldn't stick around long either, it was something to consider. And that's it, so how good was Crobat? It was... Okay, it's one of the few Pokemon we've talked about where it started bad and then got significantly better before becoming not too great once more. And honestly, part of that in the beginning is that it couldn't cut it as Golbat. But even in Gen 2, Crobat's move pool held it back a lot. It eventually ended up with quite the wide selection of moves, but its attack and defense stats are still kind of meh, and we can see it slowly fading out of relevance in overuse. But it's still quite good in other formats, just because of how much utility it now brings. But just goes to show through the power of friendship, you can always get better. Thanks so much for watching. Of course, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And of course, as I always say, comment on what Pokemon you want to see next. And of course, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to our crew for helping me put together these videos every week. You can follow them on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.